Hi, I'm Wag, and today I'd like to read an extract from my story, Daphne the Huntress, which appears in the June issue of The Scribe. In the story, Daphne, a middle-aged woman, is hunting for a man. Her problem is that each time she closes in on her prey, her rival, Jasmine, pounces and gets him. Should she continue to compete with Jasmine, or should they team up and hunt together? Lionesses hunt in packs, after all. Or is there yet another way? This is how the story starts. It's a tricky business, hunting. Ask any lioness on the Serengeti. And it's even worse when stalking in a habitat which is not to your liking. Boring, stuffy tat. Daphne muttered to herself. She found this auction room with its clutter of sombre bric-a-brac, airless, oppressive and fussy. It was much more her friend Jasmine's kind of territory. Well, so-called friend. And unfortunately she was here too, with both her chins, and focused on the same prey. But then Mr. Robinson was well worth hunting. Tall and slim, with thick wavy white hair swept back off his high forehead, a cultured plummy voice, and a series of impeccable pinstriped suits that whispered of excellent breeding, he was definitely a cut above the average auctioneer. The silly China shepherdess Daphne was toying with, and in danger of dropping, was only her cover while she ogled him. But for her sense of dignity, she would have licked her lips. Very tasty, she thought. But how to secure the quarry without letting some other predator get him, like Jasmine? Daphne had established that he had been divorced for around five years and was at present unattached but she was still looking for a suitable occasion to invite him round for dinner one evening. She couldn't afford to let too much time go by. She still smarted over the matter of Angus Fotheringay, whom Jasmine had snatched practically from under her nose only a year before. It hadn't lasted, of course. Jasmine had no staying power in relationships but Daphne had scorned to pick up another woman's leftovers. Nor was that the only annoyance. Sylvia was also here, and Daphne was being very careful not to catch her eye. Sylvia was probably all right, really, Daphne thought, despite her platinum blonde hair and her over-loud over manner, but she was still an unwelcome distraction to a huntress focusing on her quarry. A quick glance sideways revealed that Sylvia was looking at a teapot. At last, the inevitable happened. Daphne! Sylvia squealed and then covered her mouth in mock embarrassment. Suppressing a sigh, Daphne put down the shepherdess and moved over to her. I was just thinking of you, Sylvia said. You like China stuff, don't you? This... She nodded towards the teapot. Might be just your cup of tea. Ha ha. Unless it's too rude. She nudged Daphne in the ribs with a very sharp elbow. Daphne hadn't looked closely at the teapot before. Art Nouveau in style, coloured in delicate pink and greens, it was striking, if slightly risque. The handle was moulded into the form of a slim but surprisingly well-stacked naked lady, arching herself backwards, showing off her bust tipped with rosy nipples. Daphne felt it was one of the very few things here that she was prepared to have in her house, and she couldn't keep coming here and not bidding for anything. She wondered if it was, if it was real Art Nouveau or an imitation. She turned it upside down and looked at the base, but couldn't make out the tiny hallmark there. What a pity she hadn't brought her magnifying glass. One just like this was valued at £200 on the Antiques Roadshow last week, Sylvia enthused. Did you see it? 
Daphne thought she had seen something a bit like this, but she had time to. But before she had time to say anything, Sylvia shrieked, "Jasmine!" Daphne started to groan and disguised the noise as a cough. Already, Jasmine was waddling towards her, her whole demeanour expressing reluctance. Now there was no escape for either of them. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the extract and that it tempts you to read the full story. Bye.